So we started off today with the discussion of this homework problem that you just turned in. We have a thin metallic wire, thermal conductivity K and diameter D and length 2L. So you think about it like this. And so the half length is L and the other half length is L. It's 2L length. It's annealed by passing electric current through the wire to induce a volumetric heat generation. Isn't this our symbol Q dot for the volumetric heat generation? What are the units on Q dot? Watts per meter cubed. Okay. Uh, the ambient air around the wire is at a temperature T infinity. And the ends of the wire at plus and minus L. So this end as well as that end are at the temperature T infinity as well. T infinity. So... Um, Heat transfer from the wire to the air is characterized by convection. So you have H and you have uh, convection off of the wire. And um, obtain an expression for the following, the steady state temperature distribution along the wire. What's the approach to get the temperature distribution? T is a function of X. Well, let me be clear. You can start the coordinate system at, at, at the center line and move it out. Maybe that's easy for you. So I'm going to be talking about x at 0 and x of L for boundary conditions. Maybe that's the best. Because it's symmetrical, I don't, I don't really need to go all the way to minus L. You can do that too. But what do I need to get the temperature distribution? I need a differential equation. True? It's a differential equation. Uh, so far, have we been solving ODEs or PDEs in this class? O to E is just an ordinary differential equation. So what you do is you grab a little section out of the rod. Here, I'll just grab it like this and pull it out. And we have to introduce some terms. We know that the uh, perimeter is pi times d. The cross-sectional area is pi d squared over 4. We've done those for fin analysis. And... Um, this distance that is, we just pulled out is distance dx, true? And we say, let's do an energy balance. Energy balance for this little section. So we have the conduction coming in at x, the conduction going out at x plus delta x. We have the convection off the surface, q, convection. And then we have a heat source term. Let me just draw it like this, q source which is equal to the volumetric heat generation rate times the volume of that little element. Yeah, this is where a lot of people, I think, were challenged. Isn't the volume of the element the cross-sectional area times delta x? Q dot, the cross-sectional area times delta x. So let's put all these equations into our uh, heat balance equation. You can write it a couple different ways, but let's do in uh, q sub x is an in, true? Is equal to uh, any of the outs. Let's put the q convection over there. And another in is this q dot a sub c delta x. That's a source. And then another out would be a q at x plus delta x. So these two are the conduction down the length. This is the convection off the surface, and that's the heat generation coming in. Well, to the save space, I'm going to put minus Q at X plus delta X over here. Why? Because I've done it a few times. <laughs> okay. And now we apply Fourier's law. What's for so this moved over, true? Okay. So you have minus a minus K a sub c dt dx at x plus delta x. Isn't that the right representation for the flow coming out at x plus delta x conduction? And then we're going to have minus a k a sub c dt dx at x plus q dot a sub c delta x equal to, for the convection, we're going to have the um, H times the perimeter times delta X times T minus T infinity. Let me pause. 
Let me look for a few thumbs up if you're with me. Do I have any errors anywhere? It's so easy to have a negative sign error, it's not even funny. Do I have a negative sign error? So this negative on a negative becomes a positive right there. I divide through by delta x all the terms. So it goes, gets rid of there. True. I then remember from calculus, if I let the limit as the, of this ratio, delta x goes to 0. I can put the k and the a sub c outside. I get the second derivative with respect to x. And then I still have that volumetric heat source, the cross-sectional area, h, p, t minus t infinity. You don't have to introduce theta. The book introduced theta and then packaged it up nice and neatly, didn't it? Introduced the parameter m, m squared, lowercase m or m squared. You can clean this up a little bit. You can put the over k a sub c. That'll get rid of that. Put that k underneath of the, the q dot, and it'll get rid of there, there. So I would, if you know, if I was like you starting this, I'd say there's my differential equation. It's the second derivative of temperature with respect to x squared plus q dot divided by k equal to hp over k a sub c. Somebody says, all right, let's call that m squared to be consistent. That's fine. t minus t infinity. Somebody says, uh, put this over here with a minus sign. That's fine. Uh, put this over here with the minus sign. Well, now you got a lot of minus signs, but it, it, you can do that. <laughs> you can do that. You could rearrange it any way, shape, or form. It's second order. How many boundary conditions do I need? Two. And so let's go boundary condition number one. What do we put at, uh, let's put it at x equal to zero in the center. dt dx at x equal to zero is y. Symmetrical, exactly, it's symmetrical. It's as if it was well insulated. And then the second boundary condition, specified temperature, T at L is equal to T infinity. Well, how do you solve for that? Anybody slug through it? How many people used any software to help them solve it? Which software? Which one? Wolfram? 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 Anybody use something other than Wolfram? Alpha? That's what I would have done when I was an undergrad, but it's uh, pretty challenging. Is it okay? You got it analytically? Good. Anybody else get it analytically without any help from software? I applaud you, but it's pretty, pretty hard to do. Okay? All right, once you solve for it, then you go on. Where's the maximum temperature in the wire? Because of symmetry, it's a center line. And what about the average temperature? Well, you get T as a function of X. And then if I wanted to T A, B, G, how would I do it? 1 over L, the integral of T sub X DX from 0 to L. <coughs> That's how you get the average. All right, I need to press forward. That took too many minutes, but let's press on now.